All right, everyone, it is 10 o'clock here in beautiful Lomita, California. So I want to thank you all for joining me on this Friday morning. And today we are talking about the predictive maintenance techniques and data acquisition equipment that you can use to increase efficiency and transparency in your factory operations. Today we're going to talk about what predictive maintenance is, its benefits for manufacturers, and some predictive maintenance best practices. Then we'll look at examples of data acquisition methods for predictive maintenance using some ICP-DAS USA hardware. Then we'll look at the specifics of the products in the example before moving on to our Q&A session. I have my application engineer, Robert, with me today to answer any of your more technical questions. I do ask that you hold your questions until the very end of the presentation, but if you think of one during the presentation, go ahead and type it into the Q&A box through your Zoom interface. Um, and we will get to those on a first-come, first-served basis during the Q&A session. Alternatively, you can raise your hand again through the Zoom interface, and we can will uh, answer your question on mic during the Q&A. So first, a little bit about us, if this is your first time joining us. ICP-DOS was founded in 1993. Our headquarters is located in Sinchu, Taiwan. ICP-DOS USA was founded in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We are located in Lomita, California. We have over 100 R&D engineers working to develop new products and to support our customers. And we always take customer input very seriously when it comes to designing new products or updating current products. We're ISO 9001 certified in the States, SGS certified in the UK, and we're a Windows embedded partner, and our products are Rojas compliant. But let's dive right in. Though predictive maintenance systems monitor the condition and track the performance of machines and processes during regular operation. The goal is to detect possible defects and fix them before they can cause a breakdown. The key to predictive maintenance planning is to gather data that informs you of the specific conditions or circumstances that lead to a machine slowdown or breakdown. Thus, the best assets to start monitoring are those that have suspected or previously known failure states. With enough data and forethought, you can, detect those, you can detect those failure conditions or circumstances and conduct maintenance just before a breakdown or a failure happens. This limits your costs in terms of replacement parts, minimizes the maintenance time for each piece of equipment in the long run, and improves efficiency by minimizing unplanned downtime. And of course, this leads to a safer and more productive workplace. If you think of a factory or manufacturing process as a body, then predictive maintenance is like preventative medicine. An effective predictive maintenance system and schedule is like getting regular checkups from your doctor. And furthermore, if you have a known issue in the body, like a heart condition, you can test and monitor uh, that, that condition to specifically stop it before it gets worse. The predictive maintenance system really shines when you can respond to a known issue. Like in the example from last month's webinar at a palm oil mill in Thailand. For those of you who weren't with us last month, I'm going to recap that example a little bit later. But to sum up, companies that invest in predictive maintenance reduce maintenance costs, save time and labor costs, and can actually increase output over time. A couple of predictive maintenance best practices. Condition monitoring for predictive maintenance is a specific kind of data acquisition. And luckily, data acquisition is our specialty. Condition monitoring is the acquisition and analysis of specific equipment parameters like vibration, temperature, motor RPM, power usage, etc. And you capture this data first with the goal of identifying a baseline 
and then with the goal of identifying the changes in that condition that can predict impending equipment failure. Once you have both a baseline and your predictive metrics, you can use a control system or SCADA to send out alerts when you reach a suboptimal condition. By identifying and detecting equipment failure states, and by creating a model of how to predict uh, the conditions, those conditions as they worsen leading up to the failure, condition monitoring allows you to design a predictive maintenance schedule that can minimize unplanned downtime. To achieve an effective... <clears throat> Excuse me. To achieve an effective predictive maintenance system, here are some predictive maintenance best practices to keep in mind. Number one, determine which assets are critical. Critical can be defined as a certain dollar amount per hour, or through safety regulations or other concepts. Whatever, the cho uh, whatever processes or machines are chosen to be critical will be the routinely tested assets. Two, consider what typically goes wrong with these machines. This will clarify what tests you should run. In our palm oil mill example, the breakdowns were caused by a jam in the hopper that feeds the palm kernels into the mill. Over time, you can build a battery of tests to determine how and when things are going wrong. In the palm oil mill, breakdowns were always preceded by a sharp spike in energy consumption as the mills worked harder and harder to process the jam. Number three, consider testing frequency. Establishing the sampling interval requires data, which can come from a previous failure mode or can be generated through a sampling study. Initially, more frequent sampling is the most conservative approach, but sampling frequency can be adjusted over time as more data is gathered. All right, without much further ado, we're going to get into a predictive maintenance system using ICP DOS USA products with a few stops along the way to talk about the products themselves. The purpose of the system is to determine the condition of in-service equipment in order to estimate and schedule the timing of maintenance with the goal of reducing maintenance costs and increasing output. To implement the plan, there are two general systems that we need to set up. Number one, a system to measure and record the power consumption data for every machine, which can then be compared with the yield for the same period and a baseline identified as a goal for future improvement. And number two, a condition monitoring and data acquisition system to observe vital components in a machine, such as motors, bearings, valves, pumps, etc., which can, uh, it can then be determined whether the temperature has increased, the current performance has changed, or if there have been any variations in the vibration frequency. If any abnormal issue is identified, an alarm can easily be issued and maintenance performed uh, before that issue causes damage to the machine. So the first system is power consumption monitoring and analysis. So last month's webinar used the example of a predictive maintenance system at a palm oil mill. And it's such a great example of predictive maintenance using power data that I will risk repeating myself. So I already mentioned some examples in the previous slides, so I will sum up. At the palm oil mill, our customer had a problem with persistent slowdowns and breakdowns with the oil expellers. A hopper at the top of the machine feeds the palm kernels into a press, which extrudes the oil. If an operator overfeeds the hopper, the press gets gummed up, and the motor has to work harder to output the same volume of oil. This was both inefficient and dangerous. It slowed production down, and clogs in the hopper had to be cleared by an operator with a stick. The solution they came up with was simple. By measuring power consumption from each mill, they were able to see the progression in power usage as the motor struggled to process the clog. They could map the progression of the jam and devised a simple alert system to clear the jams before they caused serious problems. To do this, they used our PM3000 series smart power meters, along with a PM5231 power meter data concentrator, to gather the power data and communicate it to the control room where the whole system could be monitored. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, the uh, recording of last month's webinar is available through our website or on our YouTube channel. And if you'd like a link, my contact information will be at the 
end of the presentation, and I'll be happy to send you that information. So the second component of our predictive maintenance system is the system which measures vibration. So vibration in a system process or machine is monitored and used to detect anomalies and avoid failures. Vibration analysis is commonly used for rotating machines. Faults such as unbalance, misalignment, looseness, loose bearings, and resonance condition can be detected by vibration analysis. In this case, we're using an accelerometer to measure vibration and collecting the data with one of our accelerometer data loggers. The accelerometers can measure displacement, velocity, or acceleration, and any of those parameters can be used for vibration analysis. Triaxial accelerometer arrays, when feasible, or at least three individual axes of data, are needed for accurate vibration analysis. So you use the accelerometers to measure vibration data from your assembly line under operation. One of our AR200 or AR400 data loggers captures the data, which can be stored on board with a micro SD card and or sent over Ethernet to the control room for analysis. ICP-USA also provides a utility that can be installed on the host PC that can be easily configured for different triggering modes, as well as changing the sampling rate and scheduling the sampling time for various applications using the included development tools. So the next component of the system is a little trickier. There's a pretty wide array of data types you can capture. And to make that easier, I'm going to introduce you to two product families. The first is the SG3000 signal conditioner family. You can use these to condition sensor signals to a standardized output. Combine the signal conditioners with one of our PET 7H16M high-speed data acquisition modules, and you have a flexible and reliable data acquisition system that captures conditioned data at very high sample speeds. You can monitor a variety of signals from a wide range of machines and collect real-time data from different regions on the factory line and immediately transmit the data to the central management system over Ethernet. The SG3000 series signal conditioning modules can be connected to a variety of sensors for current, voltage, thermocouple, uh, RTD, strain gauge, and IEPE accelerometer measurement, and then the different input signals can be filtered, isolated, or amplified, which can subsequently be converted to an analog voltage or current output in a common measurement range. In addition to the signal conditioners, you can employ one of our PET 7H16M DAQ modules. These are a high-speed data acquisition module with an embedded Ethernet communication port for transferring data over the network. The PET 7H16M module includes eight high-speed analog input channels with a maximum sampling rate of up to 200,000 samples per second, which allows for simultaneous 16-bit analog-to-digital signal conversion on each channel. Furthermore, this module includes a synchronous data acquisition feature for, for each of its analog input channels. This is important for measuring different types of data uh, during the same period of time under normal operation. And the built-in analog-to-digital converter in each AI channel provides the anti-aliasing feature to adjust the appropriate sampling rate and to filter out modulator and noise. The advantages of this module make data ac acquisition and transmission faster and more accurate. The PET 7H16M not only supports a wide range of measurement applications, but also provides precision signal measurement. The PET 7H16M module can be used for continuous data acquisition, n-sample acquisition, and simultaneous acquisition from multiple channels. The maximum acquisition speed for each analog input channel is up to 200 kHz, which is suitable for high-speed data acquisition from a variety of mechanical, electronic, and physical signals in various fields. Also, iSpeed USA provides a utility for use with this module that can be installed on the host PC, which supports VC, C Sharp, Visual Basic.net, and also LabVIEW development tools, meaning that you can easily manage the, uh, the data using the included dev tools.
All right, and a little bit more on the uh, PET-7H-16M specs. I know I mentioned a lot of the specifications in the previous examples, but to sum up, this uh, is a module that includes eight analog in input channels, each with the 16-bit uh, analog-to-digital converter with anti-aliasing features, up to 200 kilosamples per second sample rate. It also includes four digital in and four digital out channels, multiple trigger modes that you can uh, trigger through the software interface, also multiple sample modes, continuous and end sample transmission mode. I also mentioned our SG3000 series. Now there's a wide number of uh, signal conditioners available in this family. And I talked about these at length in one of my more recent webinars, I believe it was two or three months ago. So if you're interested in any of our current transformers signal uh, or uh, signal conditioning modules, I can send you more in information or a link to that previous webinar. So two specific modules that I like to feature are the SG3000 and the SG3016. Uh, the SG3000 is a thermocouple input module, very useful in pr predictive maintenance for taking temperature readings. And the SG3016 is um, a strain gauge signal conditioning module. So you use these to condition those signals to a standard analog output. And to give you an idea of all the types of measurement that you can tape, here is uh, the selection table for our SG3000 series. So we have uh, a couple different types of thermocouple RTD input. There's the triaxial input signal conditioner, uh, strain gauge, like I mentioned, but also DC voltage input and output, and <clears throat> a couple different options for um, DC input and output, as well as the resistor module, yeah. just to give you an idea of what we have available there. So I also mentioned our AR200 and AR400 accelerometer data logger modules. So the AR200 and AR400 are a range of high-performance dynamic signal acquisition modules that are designed specifically for vibration monitoring and analysis. The maximum simultaneous sampling rate for each channel on the AR200 and AR400 is up to 200 kilohertz and 125 kilohertz, respectively. So that's up to 200 kilohertz on the two-channel version and 125 kilohertz simultaneous sample rate on the four-channel version. That's each channel. These modules include a built-in 3 milliamp excitation current to power the IEPE, IEPE accelerometers and a 16-bit analog-to-digital converter. The data acquired by the AR200 and AR400 is saved on a micro SD card that can be used for offline vibration analysis. ICP-USA also provides a utility that can be installed on the host PC and easily used to configure different trigger modes, as well as changing the sampling rate and scheduling the sampling time for various applications using our dev tools. Consequently, the AR200 and AR400 modules are recommended as your best choice for vibration monitoring and measurement. I believe that about sums up everything that I had to say today about predictive, uh, about predictive maintenance techniques. The ICP-USA Intelligent Predictive Maintenance Solutions can help increase the efficiency and transparency of your maintenance systems. By knowing which, which item of, of equipment needs maintenance, maintenance personnel can make better decisions that help to increase equipment lifetime and make for a safer workplace. Well, as always, why should you choose ICP-USA? ICP-USA has been a provider of industrial automation and data acquisition systems for over 20 years. We have long-time happy customers all over the Western Hemisphere, and we specialize in providing products that are reliable and affordable. The perfect components to round out your DAQ or control system, as well as, of course, your predictive maintenance system. Our products can improve efficiency and connect legacy equipment with newer technology. But with that said, it's time to move into our Q&A session. 
So if you have left a question in the Q&A box, we'll get to those now. But if you want to ask your question on mic, just raise your hand through the Zoom interface, and uh, we'll get to you.